hi booktube and welcome to a new video that i hope is going to be a bit of a treat so uh one of my favorite uh, booktubers is sean the book maniac not least for his incredible creativity in terms of different types of content and as proof of that he came up with a rather wonderful tag called the booktube parasite tag and the idea behind that is you watch somebody's another booktuber's haul or wrap up or whatever and that those books you then sort of devour yourself and make a video sort of commenting on what you made of them now i've wanted to do this for a long time but i haven't been able to find uh, a video that's appealed where every book or a significant number of books on that video has appealed to my uh, rather um <laughs> limited tastes so uh, i've gone i've decided to parasite the parasite tag so i'm going to do a goodreads edition so uh, I've gone to Sean's Goodreads uh, list of books and how he has shelved them. And of course, one thing about Sean uh, is that uh, he is the uh, Baalmeister. He is uh, not shy of abandoning a book, putting it down for good. Um, and that's one way that he and I differ wildly. I have some kind of psychological block on doing that. I think the number of books I've bailed on in my life would probably make for a middling year of Sean's <laughs> reading career of, of Bales um, and you know we do have quite different tastes Sean and me uh, that's not to say I haven't received some really good um, hot takes uh, on books that I've picked up based on what he said so for example Anthony Mara's A Constellation of Vital Phenomena which is one of Sean's all-time favorite books I read last year and was brilliant five star I think it got in my top 10 last year I can't remember now uh, another one was uh, J.H. Carr, A Month in the Country, which Sean loves and rereads quite often. Uh, I wasn't quite as smitten with it. I think it was a f solid four star for me. Um, then we had Edouard Louis' A History of Violence, uh, which I didn't get on with at all, although Sean really liked it. But I, it was a curious way in which I didn't get on with it. I'll post the link to the video. It, it's a book that just put me in an uncomfortable position. It wasn't necessarily the, the you know, that I hated the book. It just... It had a strange effect on me so there's not you know we're not without some crossover but i'm going to look at two years worth of sean bales and you know given the difference in taste between me and sean the theory is that if sean bales they should be four or five star reads for me um so let's see if that is indeed the case so uh the first one uh that i've got was from 2017 is cloud atlas and sean said Disliked the bloviated Latinate prose, bailed at 10%. Um, fantastic use of the word bloviated there. Um, I'm not quite sure that Latin, why is Latinate a criticism of a style? Are you sort of, I don't know, are you sort of saying that it's a bit too sort of formal rather than sort of slightly more vernacular based in sort of French and Anglo Saxon? I don't know, I don't quite understand that. Um, I. I have a curious relationship with David Mitchell. So I read Ghost Written and the other one set in Japan, which I really liked. Then I read this, which I quite liked. Uh, and Sean Bailing at 10% is interesting because every chapter is different, uh, different time, different setting, different characters. So he actually said he quite enjoyed the first one and then said the second one felt like more of the same. Um, but. So I quite liked it, but then, you know, I read his sort of more straight uh, fiction, because this is experimental in its structure, I'd say, because it builds up, it sort of has an arc where a theme of will to power uh, builds up through each of these chapters up to the halfway point, and they're all, as I say, different characters, different times, and then he returns to them in reverse order, so you end up with the same characters as you started with. Um, I like his straight fiction, like The Thousand Sons of Jacob de Zoot and Black Swan Green. And then I read Bone Clocks, which is very much in the vein of this, and I hated Bone Clocks. So, because I hated Bone Clocks so much, I came back to regard this as, when David Mitchell writes sort of fantasy stuff, which is a large element of this, I really don't like it, but then I don't like fantasy, so I absolutely agree with Sean. Um, but when he writes the more straight stuff, I do still kind of like him for that. So... I'm pretty much in agreement with Sean on this. I think it's probably a three-star read for me. Next, Leaving the Atocha Station by Ben Lerner. I think this was his debut. Uh, Sean wrote, started to annoy me at 29%. 
Well, I can exactly see why. I'm actually surprised Sean took 29% to get. This is a really self-indulgent character. He's an American student, bumming around Spain, has no real responsibilities, is supposed to be writing a book, but isn't. Uh, and he just sort of goes from one sort of group of people in a social situation to another. So I can entirely understand why Sean wrote what he wrote as a review. But I kind of liked it. It did sort of suck me in. I mean, it's not a fantastic book. Sort of three and a half stars. Then we came to the end. Joshua Ferris, also a debut. Uh, Sean wrote, inordinately pleased with itself. I concluded I couldn't come to the end. Two stars, uh, which is a pithy, wonderful review. Now, to say um, inordinately pleased with itself, I can imagine this Joshua, Fer um, not Joshua, um, Ben Lerner. That's a fair criticism of that. Um, I, I think that's a bit unfair on this. I, I thought there were some tender moments. It's basically a group of people who work together in an office and, and their relationships and, you know, there's sort of a tragic arc in it. And I thought, you know, when that tragic arc sort of came to its apotheosis, I thought that was really well handled and really, really quite tender. I read Ferris's next book which I now can't remember, and I didn't think it was as good. So, again, for me, sort of three and a half stars. I don't bail, but I guess if I, if I say two and a half or two stars, that would be equivalent of my bailing. Uh, next one, Solar Bones, um, which I, I used to have. Uh, I've unhauled it, so that'll give you a clue as to what I thought about it. This fellow can write, but a one-sentence novel is pretentious, says Sean. Well, I, I um, leaving aside the one-sentence novel bit, we'll come back to that. This fellow can write. It starts off brilliantly. There's this scene where it's set in the, sort of the Irish countryside. And it describes a scene where someone's taken a tractor apart because it needs they need to get to the bottom of why it's not working. And all these parts are laid out in this sort of huge fabric. And it's brilliantly described, and it's metaphorical, and it's resonant. And then it just becomes really tedious after that. And there's sort of uh, the town, the local town has sort of its um, its water supplies causing people to get ill and stuff like that. And it was just, it went absolutely nowhere. So for me, it was a two star. And yeah, I guess I, you know, had a, was I of the mentality, I would have bailed. And just on that uh, one sentence novel is pretentious. I guess, Sean, you're not going to enjoy Zone by Matthias Ennard if you ever pick it up, because that is a big book, much bigger than Solar Bones, uh, told in one sentence. And I love Zone. Uh, next book, Wonder Boys by Michael Chabon. Chabon. Wonderful writing, not at all my kind of story. Um... I also dislike this. I read this this year and I can't remember what I gave it, but I would say two to two and a half stars. And I, you know, again, were I of a bailing bent, I would bear, I would have bailed on this. There is some good writing in the sense of there's some funny lines, uh, but the characters, again, are so self-indulgent. You know, I'm so bored of reading about people who, who smoke spliff and, you know, therefore acts, make some slightly strange decisions and go on slightly sort of, uncoordinated, unthought through, unprompted journeys and incidents, which this book is. Um, yeah, I, I really didn't like this at all. He's, he seems to be in a stream of American writers, uh, like Sam Lipsight, Jonathan Nathan to a lesser extent, uh, who write these books in very clever lines, but sort of ho-hum plots. I exclude Lethan from that. I think Lethan has a bit more to him, but there seem to be quite a few authors like this. And in a way, Ben Lerner, Although I would defend Lerner more, Ben Lerner's another one you could group together. So we begin to detect a trend here uh, in Sean's taste, but to be fair to him, I sort of feel similar. Naomi Alderman, The Power. Uh, I don't have it to show because I unhauled it. Uh, Sean wrote, didn't end up holding my interest. Uh, it's a shame you bailed Sean because the most pleasure I got out of this book was, was just driving through it to the end because I wanted to put together uh, a blistering uh, attack on everything about that book. You know, it's geopolitics were absolute nonsense. It's gender politics were absolutely hideous. So my interest was sustained by giving the ammunition to attack the book. So uh, I wouldn't have bailed, but yeah, it was my worst book of the year, 2017, two stars. Um, but I wouldn't have bailed, bizarrely. Uh, next one. In fact, the last one in his 2017 list that I've read. I ought to say that I'm only commenting on books obviously that I own or have read. Uh, H, 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 H. 
uh, Sean wrote, I like my history straight up, bailed at 10%. Well, um, it's a shame you bailed at 10% because this is a deeply subversive book. It's about how history is produced by academics and how the human element means it's not the pseudoscience that it claims. You know, it claims to have all these rigorous documented proofs. You have to back, you know, back up anything you say with source material and stuff. And this book is, is supremely subversive of all of that. So on the face of it, it's about a, a historian who's writing the story of um, Heydrich, who was the, the Hitler's man in, in Prague, because Prague was proving unruly. So they sent Heydrich in to, to you know, bring it under control, and Heydrich was brutal, hanging people from the, the, the lampposts and things like that. So I think Sean felt, oh, this was going to be a history of that, and he didn't feel, he didn't, he wasn't acquainted with Heydrich and that history and didn't feel he needed to be because obviously Heydrich was so reprehensible. But actually, I think the book is a lot more than just that. So it's a shame you bailed Sean, but, you know, I kind of understand why. And on to 2018, Jennifer Egan, Manhattan Beach, which Sean rated as two-star. He reached the 48% mark, still waiting for the goddamn story to begin. Um, I have my problems with this book. Uh, but I think they're slightly different to Sean's. Uh, no, in some ways they are, in some ways they're not. I love Jennifer Egan. I mean, A Visit from the Goon Squad, which won the Pulitzer, I think is a tremendous book. And I've read The Keep and Look at Me, which are flawed. And I think she's an interesting writer. And this is flawed. Um, so she's not a perfect writer. I disagree with Sean in that I think it does get going at the beginning. Well, my problem is 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 towards the, the, the last third when it reintroduces a character who just slows up the action, uh, you know, just takes away from the strength of the book. Basically, it's about, you know, a, a young woman who is, you know, pushing ahead against the glass ceiling. In this case, it's the Second World War. She's working in the naval factories in the dockyards, but what she wants to become is a deep-sea salvage diver for the Navy. And uh, all the time, the, you know, the male-dominated Navy is saying, no, 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 you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. And then, you know, she has a relationship with a guy who turns out to basically to be a gangster. And, I, you know, I think those two characters are really interesting, really well-drawn. There's lots of really interesting bits. So the woman has a sister. And uh, I think, does she have two sisters? Anyway, one of them is, sev is severely uh, disabled. And there's such a tender scene when the two the two sisters take the disabled uh, sister out out you know for a trip you know get her out of the house. So there's some beautiful writing here, but it's true. There's just so much you know crud that gets in the way and slows it up. So again, I can see why Sean didn't like it, but I didn't like it for oh, I didn't like parts of it because I still gave it three and a half to four stars. I didn't like different it for different reasons. I think. Uh, the Third Policeman by Flan O'Brien. He uh, bailed at 25%. If there was anything actually happening, doubtful. I certainly didn't give a rat's ass about it. Um, I haven't read this. This is in my to-be-read pile. I'm looking forward to it. It's a book... When I was at university, um, I did history. Uh, and I ran the uh, football, uh, or for Americans, uh, soccer. Soccer. Um, wash my mouth out with mouthwash uh, team there and uh, I had a lot of players who were studying English in the year below in, in my team and they were all huge devotees of this book and of this, this author um, so I, you know, I bought it on the basis of that and never got round to reading it and lost my copy so I actually rehauled this uh, a couple of weeks ago um, and just to say that one of those uh, English students was Sam Mendes, uh, the film director uh, so, you know, it's got the seal of approval for Sam Mendes. And Sam Mendes knew his Samuel Beckett, I will say. He was a real expert on Samuel Beckett. Um, Tell Me How It Ends by uh, Valeria Luiselli. 50% uh, bail, only got about 1% of it, though. So this is a book of well, a series of short essays by Valeria Luiselli, who wrote... Um, the Lost Children Archive, which I've just finished, and will almost certainly be my best read of 2019. Another book that Sean bailed on, uh, he bailed on it in 2019, so I'm not going to include it in this, because I'm only looking at 17 and 18. Now, Lewis said he wrote this first as a sort of non-fiction consideration of the child uh, migrant uh, issues in America, and she says she has said that she felt she needed to write it out in non-fiction first. 
before she could write the fictional version. And I read it in the other order. I read the fiction version first and then this. And I'm really glad I did. I think it was really important for me to have read both. Uh, yeah, sorry, given that I love the novel so much, to then go back and read this. And the reason I say I think I'm glad I read it in that order is, first of all, if there is a political message to her novel, uh, by writing this first, the, me the political message is hard and fast here, it's in your face, so that the novel doesn't have to rely on such instrumentality, the novel does not have to preach to you because this contains the message and I think that's to be applauded and the other thing is you realize you know what in the novel is completely made up what is fictional it's based on real life events from here but they you know her creative imagination to take to make that something else into an incredible novel I just appreciate even more having read the seeds of fact that, that, you know, from this book, that it was based on. So I'm sorry that you didn't like that, Sean. Uh, you know, this is not a five-star read, but I learned a lot from it, you know, about about the whole US migrant crisis, uh, which I knew about, but I learned a lot more from this. But, you know, th for me, the real gem is, is, the, is the novel, The Lost Children Archive. I'm sorry you bailed on that as well. Um, and penultimate Memento Mori, which for sure was a reread. Um, so I'm assuming he bailed on it the second time. Obviously, he must have liked it enough the first time. Well, not necessarily, but I know he was a big fan of Memento of Mural Spot because what he says here is, I'm just not into Mural anymore. So for me, this is my f introduction to Mural Spot. Obviously, I was aware of the private Miss Jean Brodie, but never actually read it. So uh, I picked this one up rather than that because, you know, Adam has named his channel, his booktube channel after it, Adam at Memento Mori. And at the time, a lot of people were coming back to rereading re this because there was a whole mural spark readathon. And um, I hated it. <laughs> um, I didn't bail. I just thought it was mean spirited. I didn't really see, you know, it was just having a pop at, at people in old age for being doddery and losing their minds and being obsessed with money and inheritance and stuff. And the philosophical thing that kicks it all off, you know, remember you must die, as in Memento Mori, is never explained. You know, they all get phone calls and just the only thing that's said is remember you must die. And that's never really explained. So I, I didn't get anything out of this book at all and I gave it two and a half, I think. And finally, The Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch. I do not have. Sean said one star. She matched her pet male peers in creating relationships so bilious, so hateful, I almost puked on page 203 just now. <laughs> I think it's a typically wonderful Sean uh, review. Um, I read this years and years and years ago. I may even read it in college um, in my leisure time. I can't remember a thing about it, which I think suggests that Sean... You know, I can't attest to the precise uh, criticism that Sean gives, but hey-ho, it didn't leave any impression on me, so I kind of agree on the low rating. So there you have it. Um, Sean, I hope you don't take too much offence that I've quoted you. Uh, I hope you don't think I'm stalking you by looking at your Goodreads um, bail shelves. Uh, but thank you for your continual uh, inspiration for content. Um, until next time, thanks very much. <laughs>